Senate this week, Senator, seeing some of the first legislation of the session, including in that, this one's called the, the Fast Track Program. It's Senate Bill 672. Tell us about that one. Yes, one of the first pieces of legislation to clear the Senate this year was Senate Bill 672, which extends the sunset on Missouri's Fast Track Workforce Investment Grant Program. Originally enacted in 2019 and scheduled to lapse later this year, the Fast Track Program provides financial assistance to help non-traditional students enroll in college and other training programs. A number of senators, including myself, had concerns about about this piece of legislation. Senate Bill 672 did not include many of the Missouri taxpayer protections I fought to include when the bill originally passed in 2019. In particular, I was adamant that no money would be available to illegal immigrants. I also wanted to make sure the program only benefited residents of our state. I, along with several of my colleagues, held the floor of the Senate and blocked passage of the bill until our concerns were addressed. While we were successful in improving the Fast Track Bill, I was not able to add language to address two major educational concerns. Throughout a long evening of debate, I proposed amendments to ban the teaching of critical race theory and support an amendment to prevent biological males from competing in women's athletics. The showdown over these two amendments highlighted pretty deep divisions within the majority caucus of the Missouri Senate. 672, as I recall, I think there was a lot of work on your part to get it to where it was to this point today. Yes, most certainly. Like I said, I I had some concerns about taking out all the Missouri taxpayer protections. Some of those protections included having a sunset, so we would revisit the bill every six years. Another provision that was taken out of Senate Bill 672 that I had concerns about said that, hey, if Missouri taxpayers are going to pay for your free college education, then you should be required to live in Missouri for three years after you complete whether this new training or take college courses. Unfortunately, only the sunset portion of that taxpayer protection was included in the bill that passed. However, I was also to put in the new version of the bill, an amendment and supported an amendment that said that you had to at least live in Missouri for two years, be a resident of Missouri for two years in order to participate in the program. Another bill we've heard a lot about this year, and that's what's being called the emergency supplemental budget that's for the the current fiscal year. Yes, House Bill 3014 deals with one of the supplemental budget bills for this legislative year. This year, we are going to have two supplemental budget bills. I definitely had some concerns with this supplemental budget bill. While it did have some provisions that I approved of and and supportive, like some additional money for education. It also included $83 million for Medicaid expansion. It also included 40 plus additional full-time employees that would be hired by the state. And it did not include the Fill the Gap program, which allows for parents of kids to have feel like their child has a gap in their education because of the education system and being gone from COVID days and things like that, it would allow these parents to apply for a grant to use that grant up to $1,500 for tutoring and some online assistance to help supplement their education. And so that provision was not in the final bill that passed out of the Senate either. So for those reasons, I ended up voting against House Bill 3014, which was about a $4.7 billion bill. We literally have truckloads of money that are pouring in from the federal government to Missouri and the other states. That's one of the reasons that we're seeing an inflation rise. And I have a lot of concerns about spending money that we don't have and how that's going to affect our kids and grandkids in probably increase in taxes as they become adults. Based on what you've seen, especially with your work on the the Senate Appropriations Committee, do you think that some or all of the funding in this or spending in this rather is just one time as they've been saying it is? Well, I've been a proponent to say that, hey, these one-time dollars need to be used for one-time projects. Unfortunately, like Medicaid expansion, $83 million for Medicaid expansion is not a one-time expense. When the federal government does not give us that $83 million. That's going to have to come from general revenue. And general revenue is where we fund a lot of education programs, veterans homes, and things like that. So when this money runs out, we're going to have to dip into general revenue in order to fund Medicaid expansion. And that's a very big concern that I have.